Good day. Good day so far. I just did some fingerboarding and then can do well core. And I'm chilling right now. Doing a podcast with the main man. <laughs> oh, I love it. I'll give you the intro. I'm talking today with Max Milne, Team GB Climber. Max the Future! Max the Future, crushing on the junior scene, coming up now, senior level. He's with the big boys. He's ready to throw down. And then pandemic happened. <laughs> but now you're just at home. You're just training as usual. Yeah, just, I'm in Leeds at the moment. So I'm just down here, staying here so I can train. And just, it's like I've got a whole off season just to train for next year. So it's, it's not that bad, it's good. You've been in Leeds for a while too, right? How long, when did you first get there? So I went to Leeds up last year, around September maybe. Then I went home for Christmas and my birthday. And I came back uh, the 27th. I went to London and came here. And I've been here for like past five months. And home for you is Aberdeen in Scotland? Aberdeen in Scotland. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tory boy, that's where I'm from. But yeah, Tory, a little place in Aberdeen. How many people there? Uh, I've got no idea. <laughs> it's not a little, it's cool. Little, totally. It's nice. Well, it's not nice, but it is at the same time. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. It's home, right? It it's is home. home. Yeah. That's yeah. where it's where it all started. What's climbing like in Aberdeen? Do a lot of people climb up there? Mm, there's a good like climbing community there. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of like, there's the old guys, like the old G's. Yeah. Who are like, so Tim Rankin, shout out to that guy. He like developed the whole outdoor scene and like done heaps of things outdoor in the north, yeah. east. But then he's got his group who, yeah, there's the strong outdoor climbers and then there's like the young kids who climb mm-hmm. who are like aged eight to like 14 maybe. And then there's, beginners and me <laughs> and you and you you have yeah. your own bracket there there's... <laughs> nah, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah i know what you mean there's one gym is there one gym up there one yeah there's just one gym what's yeah. it called well the transition extreme tx shout out to tx for being a place so i can start climbing basically that is the place you started mm-hmm. yeah you're 19 now what how old were you when you started climbing? 10. Like, just 10, I think. Yeah, I just were, turned 10. Were you one of these people that, once you started, completely addicted right off the start? Did, yeah, were you, bro, one, were I, you one of these people that were at the gym five days a week, six days a week, straight up, straight out the mm, gate? Not straight out the gate, because I didn't have money to go, because climbing was expensive, isn't it? Mm. Like, so I went, like, I had... So before I started climbing, I've always climbed. So like yeah. before I could walk, I used to cli- climb out my car and shit like that. And well, the, I, I used to just climb everything when I was a kid. Lampos, yeah. trees, out my yeah. car. And then the reason I started climbing was because my mum got ill. So mm-hmm. she was diagnosed with cancer. And then me and my twin sister, we maybe school finished with, or whatever the summer. And then my dad was like getting us into things so i did a bit of snowboarding and stuff like that on like mm. artificial slopes and stuff my sister quite enjoyed skiing but then like later that year my dad took me climbing so like and it was just a tasty class with like people and then i was like i just shot up that baby slab so it's just a little slab man fucking raced up there mm-hmm. and then the guy johannes is shouting at me to slow down I and mean, he he'd never seen someone be so like off the bat yeah. so good maybe for yeah. a beginner and then yeah he's just like oh come in next week and i'll give you a free ke- coaching session and i went back did my first 60 <laughs> <laughs> then uh, i just started going like once a week i think something mm-hmm. like that for a while and then i got into like scottish north team because mm-hmm. i started competing like three a month maybe um since i started because i just went to like, a local comp in transition just mm-hmm. a little kid i was i had no idea what i was doing I was, i'm just climbing blocks it's just fun in it mm-hmm. and um i just love competing and then johannes he was like oh 
you should do these competitions. So that's like the YCS, the Youth Climbing Series. And I just started doing that straight off the bat. And then um, Scottish North team, and that gave us discount for yeah. the wall. And I could yeah. go more. <laughs> no, I just, then that's what, how it happened. And then it just ice balled, didn't it? I start going more, start getting better, enjoy it more. And then start competing more. And then I made my first. So I'd be climbing for three months or six months or whatever. And then I made the first, the final. So the grand final of the YCS. Mm-hmm. I went there. I came second last. <laughs> <laughs> but it was cool. I remember like Jim Pope was there, Pete Dawson. Um, who else was I against? Buster Martin. Like the category was like, the ages were so like wide in one category. So mm-hmm. I, I was against all of these people. They had no idea who I was. I'm just looking up to them. I'm like, these kids are good. Yeah. And I'm in there with yeah. my like flat shoes, what are too big for me, just <laughs> trying hard. So yeah, it's cool. How much older is Pope? Is I think he's how 21. old is he? Twenty one? Okay, a couple of years, just a couple yeah. of years. Yeah, so he's not so it's, that it's, much it's, older, but back then I feel yeah. like it made a difference. Definitely. A couple of years when you're younger makes a huge difference, especially in mm. athletics. Sounds like you had okay. a lot of support. A lot of people were supporting you along the way then. Yeah, man. People are nice. You know? People are nice. Some people are nice. Like, I feel like people are nice to me. Maybe, yeah, maybe that shows I'm nice, I hope. <laughs> but <laughs> people seem to help me out, so it's nice. And I appreciate all the help I get. Oh, you touched on a moment there. Uh, what kind of cancer did your mom have? Um, it was like she found there was just a lump in her back here. Yeah, I don't actually know like what cancer was or whatever, but we just thought it was like an you know a cyst or whatever mm-hmm. that is. And then um, she went to hospital for that, but it turned out it was cancer. So it sucked in it, but yeah, yeah. I kind um, of um, I started similarly actually. My my mom was first diagnosed with cancer. And I started taking a look at, at my own health and where I was at and wanted to basically make a change in my life in some way. Um, and that's when I started climbing because I knew I needed to, to change something up and I just started going climbing a bunch. But yeah, when, when, when stuff like that hits, um, yeah, it can be quite, uh, it can change a lot of things, it can change a lot of things. Yeah, it changed your whole life, I feel like. I had like so I lost my mum when I was like ten due yeah. to cancer. And then that's like I didn't really accept it at that time. Yeah. I was just like I spoke about this on my podcast a little bit as well. Like the day I got told my mum had cancer, I was just like wanted to just get away from the house. I was like, Can I go out and play? I was fucking went out yeah. to my mate's house trying to like, you know, brush it off. But mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. something like that is it's hard to just brush that off. So and mm-hmm. I don't really think that's the best way to deal with all them things. You got to sit down and see how it makes you feel. And yeah, actually really accept it because stuff like that is always going to happen in life. And I know this now through meditation and like listening to heaps of different podcasts and views on life. Mm-hmm. And it's just, I feel like I truly accepted my mom's death like last year or this year. I think. Wow. Because even just like people saying the word mum, it's fucking hard sometimes. You know? Yeah, yeah. And that's just like, yeah. 10 years old as well. So um, both of my parents have also passed away from cancer. Um, Shit. And it's... It's it's a crazy thing. I mean, I'm I wasn't ten years old. I wasn't dealing with it at that age. But it's really yeah. it's really some it's um to be to sit there with them. Cancer is kind of crazy too because I don't know how long it took for your mom, but it can, it's kind of a slow process sometimes depending on the person. For my mom, it was two and a half years. For my dad, it was about a year or so. But it's it's kind of crazy going through that to say goodbye to someone. Mm-hmm. Um, so what was, so you were 10 years old. That must've been really hard on your, on your dad. And yeah, my dad's tough, man. He's he tough didn't guy. show like, 
he didn't show weak like he didn't sh i'm not calling this weakness but he didn't show like heaps of emotion maybe that's good maybe it's bad but he, they just tried he just yeah he stayed strong for me and my sister and family i feel yeah and just like because i just tried to portray that it's okay and he's also gotta, it is okay he's gotta be the rock right yeah, man, my dad is, he's a little bolder. He's not a rock, he's a bolder. <laughs> so he, your, your family, is your dad still up in Aberdeen? Your sister's still up there? Yeah, so I've got, um, my dad lives in Aberdeen and my sister goes to uni in Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. But because um, of lockdown and all this, she went back and stayed with my dad. Now I've got an older brother, yeah. Alex, who um, he lives in Aberdeen, but not in the same house. He's 30. Big mm. old man. No, hey, hey, hey. I, I, only, <laughs> I only said that because I know it will annoy him. That's why I said that. <laughs> then I've got an older sister as well, um, who's like she lives in Canada, in Calgary. Oh, really? In Calgary? She moved, yeah, yeah. She moved there to go uh, to uni, and she's yeah, she's a fucking brainiac. She's smart, bro. Does she like yeah. it? Does she like Calgary? <laughs> She loves it. Like she, she, ain't, she ain't coming back to Scotland. <laughs> she, she'll come visit. I don't blame her. Like, yeah. For me, I, I feel like I've moved away from Scotland. I feel mm -hmm. the world's so big, but it's so small. So mm -hmm. you can just. I want to travel. That's what I'm doing. Climbing allows me to travel and see the world, see beautiful places, meet new people, and just enjoy my life as well. Well, I hope you can go see her and cool. then pop over to Squamish because Squamish yeah, is, is a pretty, pretty special place, <laughs> that place. Uh, it's amazing. You got a twin sister. Is she anything like you? She climb? No, nah, she doesn't. I, no one in my family has ever climbed before. None of them? She climbed like once. It, she climbed for a while, like not a while, maybe a year. And like yeah. she was coming maybe like once a month, twice a month, stuff like that. And then she probably mm -hmm. came for a little bit more. But yeah, she wasn't really... It, it's not a passion she doesn't mm. really like like yeah um but she's 17 minutes older than me so i'm the baby of the family but um i bet you hear that all the time too i, I embrace it i, I get all the <laughs> attention i don't mind funny story so when we were so i'm i'm pretty small for everyone listening i'm like five five and then um, in the womb I've been small my whole life, so in the womb, uh, my sis, my twin, she ate all the food. I Come assume, on. <laughs> Come she on. ate all the food. I swear she ate all the food. Uh, it's I, her I fault. I almost died. Yeah, I almost died because I was oh, starving. Oh, really? Yeah. Holy shit. Was, I didn't know they could do that. They could tell that. She's evil. She's evil. <laughs> it's not the first time she's tried to kill me either. Wait, what's the second time she tried to kill you? Um. So basically, I was getting ready for beavers. So it's like the scouts but for youngers yeah i was in beavers as a um, kid too shout out beavers yeah but um i was just out the shower i wanted to do my hair so i go into my sister's room i was like can i borrow your hair dryer because i'm running late and she said yeah sure and she had a rabbit at this point and the rabbit chewed through all the wires okay, okay? yeah and she she knew this she knew <laughs> the rabbits chewed through all the wires but she didn't want dad or mum to give her in trouble and she knew the wires. And then I saw the wires and it was like all tangled and shit from her TV, hair dryer, like all this stuff. And I was like, okay, I'll be a nice brother and sort these wires out for her. So it's mm -hmm. not all tangled. And I, I mean, they're all like cut open, but I didn't see that. Like at first glimpse, it was just like shiny metal. So I thought it was like nail burners fell on the wires. Uh -huh. So I'm just sorting through them. I just get like a kid. You did? Scary. Yeah. Man, I've got like it is scary. Probably, yeah, you can't see, but I got scars on my fingers as well. You still got burn marks. Kind of plastic melting in my fingers. Oh my god! Yeah, some people die from that. Some people's hearts yeah, stop no. from that. You can't let go. Like you're frozen. I, yeah. I was like tensing up, and I'm like, I'm just aware. I'm like, what? The, what is going on? And I just fall back, luckily. And I was like crying. I was, like, ah. Did you have to go to? The hospital or anything like that? No, I went to Beavis. <laughs> you went? <laughs> of course. Yeah. All right. You're, you're all right. Just go. 
It's just yeah. go to go to Beavers. You probably get a and badge after, for that. Yeah, I did. No, I did. But after Beavers, I thought I had like superpowers or something. I thought it was like the Flash. <laughs> I could run faster. It's a weird sensation, yeah. isn't it? When I was like younger and uh, stupider, my friend, uh, she's got a farm and her parents had sheep and everything and they got the electric fence. And so for some reason, we thought it'd be a good idea. You know, just go grab the fence. It's just like, see how long you'd hold on. But they cut out, don't they? Not this fence. Nope. (laughs) It doesn't cut out. No, it just keeps going. I think, and it it could be a problem, I think, for some animals. They get trapped in the wire. Mm -hmm. They're just, they just keep getting electrocuted. But getting electrocuted is no, no joke. That's. It's no joke. No. So that's the second time she tried to kill you and you, you stuck around. Yeah, I think I think that's the only two times, but who knows. <laughs> so you came up, you were going to the gym, you're slowly getting better. You came second place in a tournament. And did that did that tournament spark your your um, motivation to keep getting I did, better? I think second, second last, place. second last, second last. I came sorry. second last. You came second last. <laughs> And did that get you hungry? You're like, I want it. I want mm. more of this. I was probably upset. I was probably really upset. I don't mm-hmm. like losing. Was, yeah. No one wants to be a loser, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I was just like upset. I just wanted to be better. And then the next year, I just climbed and I just climbed like every day. I just go out, climb, or go out play football, just have fun basically. And I was just doing quite a lot of sport and just doing mean and I gradually just started getting better and better going more and then the year after I came 11th at the YCS finals mm-hmm. the year after I came third wow and the year after that I won it you won it yeah and then the and- year after that I got onto the British climbing team for Boulder and I, I didn't even mean to get on that team you didn't mean Literally. to you just happened to yeah it was like I went down to a competition in Derby and it was like the GB team selection, but it was an open. Yeah. Now I didn't know this. My dad didn't know this. <laughs> I just went down to this comp, came second, and then saw on the BMC website Team GB for twenty seventeen. My <laughs> my name was on the No list. shit. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? And you've had no coaching at this point, right? Was yeah, this no. just you? You're just at the gym climbing, getting stronger. You go to a competition. You have no idea what stakes are on the line or what it means, really. If you you just wanted to go do well, yeah. and you end up on the team. Maybe it, I had like, you know, Robbie Phillips. <laughs> uh, you heard of Robbie Phillips? Yeah, I have. Scottish yeah, and, no, no, I know who he is. Yeah, he gave me a little little coaching. Uh-huh. He like I went to some of his coaching workshops and stuff, and then I had a plan from him. Yeah, uh, for like. A, a few months i think but no i'm really like yeah he was the he was the person who came up with my nickname max the future he came up with it yeah and what do people say when they hear that um i was speaking to ellie about this as well she's um i live with ellie and mark and they're like their own position and i'm coached mm-hmm. by mm-hmm. position so i'm coached by them i was speaking to ellie about this the other day like people she so she coached the austrian team the last three years and then people on the austrian team like the coaches know me as max the future they don't know me as max Mon. yeah so like when they're speaking about me they're like max who no <laughs> max max Mon who who's max Mon? but it was like max the future oh i know who he is so that's that's funny i love that i think it's cool it kind of reminds me i talked to louis about this and everybody knows him as Captain Cutloose. And it was this, this name he, he, he gave himself when he was younger and just did all that. And I've asked, I asked him if he thinks it aged well with him. And it's kind of this like, for him, it's a double-edged sword because it's great, but also it, people, he thinks it, it highlights bad footwork. And so whenever that he slips or something, that's just what he's known for now, even though he's improved it. So for you, Max the Future, at some point, the future is going to be the present. Nah, and... there's always tomorrow. There's always tomorrow? Right, so, I'm not, yeah. I'm just so the future. Right now, you're good. Okay, always looking ahead. Yeah. I don't know. Like, the pres. I'm not going to ever change my name to Max the present. If people want to label me Max the present, they can. I mean, they Max can. Milne. Would you ever change your name to Max Milne? Just straight up name? Nah. No. My Instagram, 
they've stayed the same. I love it. Good, good. Own it. That's good. I do talk to people too, and they do refer to you as Back to the Future. It's just, it is stuck. It is, it is yeah. part of your identity now. Yeah, man. And I didn't even change my name to that on Instagram. It was my what? mate who did that. Really? <laughs> yeah, because we were just like, this was like before I actually, I climbed a lot, like, but I wasn't as dedicated. I'm just going out having fun with my mates and stuff. And um, my mate Cor was over at my house and we're just on my phone. And I'm just like changing my Instagram names to like PC Milne, like just making it funny. And then he changed yeah. it to Mounts the Future. And it was like, you can only edit it so many times yeah. before you can't. And I was like, <laughs> No, I actually, I actually like that. Like, it's so, sick. No, I just so, kept it. That's the origin story. That's where it all began. So Max the Future gets onto <laughs> Team GB, and suddenly you're getting to international comps. Probably leads us up to last year. You, you went to World Juniors. Was it World Juniors? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, World Juniors. And you were essentially dominating that field. Is that fair to say? When I when, yeah, when leading up to you can say what you can say what you want to say. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say it. I want to say it. Max the future was dominating the field leading up to those final boulders. You pretty much like flashed everything. You qualify. Well, did you qualify first? So I did four in six, and then mm -hmm. I qualified in my group in first place. Man, in semi-finals I did the four boulders as well. I did um four and five, some five attempts, qualified in first, and in finals. Just Some days are your days, some days aren't your days. On the day, on that day, I wasn't good enough. And it's, yeah. it's not like a massive, yeah, it's just, there's no excuse, like, I just wasn't good enough. Yeah, I guess, I guess that's one way to look at it. On another day, I could have done the final blocks yeah. as well. So do you well, feel like it was a, was it a physical thing? Was it a mental thing? Was it just the style that didn't link up for you on that, those finals? Nah, I think the style was cool. Like it was a coordination move. Like it's little things. So the coordination move, it took me ages to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And I did it completely different from any, but I did like, it was like a, a run and jump and you palm flick over and kick your foot. And it was, like four movements, I don't know, about 12. <laughs> I, don't even, I was like running, jumping, flicking up, doing some ninja skills. So it's like high pace, okay? Like fast movement, you have to be mm -hmm. on that. And then the last move is like you're sitting on this ball and then you roll over very slowly to a thumb catch and you have to match. So it goes through the change of movement. So you have to be quite fast and dynamic. And for the last move, slow it down, be calm, mm -hmm. watch your breath and just do the move. And I was just, I went at the move too fast. Like that's, and in semi, in qualification on the third block, it was, so that's the block I dropped. Mm -hmm. Okay. I did that second go and I did all the other blocks. Um, the first go. And on that moment, I got there. And I did the last move too fast. I was like, mm. okay, I need to slow it down, mm. use my breath, and then I could wait the foot better. And that's all I had to do for that block. So does that experience of being so close to junior world champ, does that feed the fire now going mm. forward? Bro, I was in tears. When I came <laughs> down, I was like, I came fourth. I wasn't even on the podium. No, who's like, this is thing. Who remembers? fourth places no one i don't even remember the fourth places who remembers third place i don't know no one second place you remember the <laughs> no champs one. that's what you remember right yeah yeah but then again it's yeah i, I want to be champ i feel like I, I can be champ i just trade climb do all the right things be an athlete and my whole career so far has been progression yeah and there's no what like who's to say is not going to continue to be progression no one knows i don't know you don't know you can't see these things you can but mm -hmm. no one has a clue 
So I'm just going to try. Does your, your coach must have a clue though, right? See, see more potential coming. So Maybe, after but- this, after that last year, you decided to make the move to Leeds. And this is when you started working with, with your coaches on, yeah, I started working on, a, with, on a full-time um, basis. I started working with Mark and Ellie after like World Champ. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I was with Lattice for two years, I think, before then. And then yeah, that whole last year I went to London. And then you know Alex Lamel. Shout yeah. out my guy. Alex um, Mel, crusher. Yeah. Does does a lot for you, for you guys. He's strong, man. He yeah. yeah. He looked out for me a lot. And I mm-hmm. went down. And then um he opened my world to different ways of training. Is he like, like the sensei? Is he like he is, he's like the, the the wise man? He is. He's 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 got wisdom. Yeah. But um yeah, he's super strong. He's motivated. He's a cool guy. I look up to him. Mm-hmm. Um and he helped me a lot out a lot with my mentality, my training. And I just I started doing my own thing. Um I started following things he was doing and mixing it up with stuff which Lattice gave me. And I was just finding my own way. And last year, I feel like that's what made me progress and get the results which I got last year. And yeah, it's just crazy how life works. And like you find these people or people come into your life, people go out of your life. And the path is just so uncertain. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I'm grateful for all the people who helped me and continue to help me. And it's sick. But yeah, he just, I started doing stuff what he was doing and I got strong pretty fast. And I just kept getting strong. And I was just, I made a big switch, switch like when I was 18. And I started like properly. That's where I say I became an athlete. Because everyone trains hard. Like people train hard. You train hard in the gym. But for me, an athlete is what you do outside of the gym. So the eating, sleeping, the recovery, all these other things. So not going out partying for me, but some athletes probably do and need downtime. And I need downtime as well. But yeah, that's where I became an athlete. And I really got driven to give it my all. So right now you're 100% focused on the future, let's say. And that is the Olympics, essentially, right? World, yeah, doing well, well on a on an international stage, competing at the highest level, yeah. and then my big my biggest motivator, and if we're speaking about results, my biggest motivator is world champion. That's yeah. like, I don't for me, you don't get bigger and better than, than that. world champion. So that is that's a big driver. But I, but I told you this before, like. I know these results and stuff, they don't bring happiness. Mm. I've found this with winning British championships at junior levels, Scottish, all this stuff. Um, they don't bring happiness. Like the, the day I, I win world championships, mm. the feeling after you do, will be amazing. You'll get a, such a big high and you'll be feel on top of the world. And I'm prepared for that. That's, that can be an amazing feeling. But then the next day or the next week, you're still the same person you was what, till you, when you were working towards this goal and your happiness levels are going to stay the same. So if I can't find happiness now in what I'm doing, then afterwards I won't be happy. And yeah, for me, that's, that's the big thing, being present and just learning to love the moments I'm in right now. So... I'm doing a podcast with you. It's yeah. fucking sick, isn't it? Like, yeah. <laughs> when I was a kid, I don't know what podcasts were. I didn't really listen to podcasts. They probably weren't a thing. I was a little probably kid from thing, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was just a little kid from Tari. And now it's pretty cool. That's, I mean, that's some really great introspection as well. Um, knowing that it's it's not about the uh, the end in itself. It's about that that process yeah will bring you joy because you will live if you live and die by the results yeah. most of the time you're going to be feeling like death <laughs> it's not going to yeah. be life won't be a great experience if 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 that's just 
what you're living for. And it sounds like you've really come to enjoy that process of, of getting better and yeah. knowing that every day you're trying to get better and that brings you joy in some way. Yeah, for sure. And this motivates me as well. Like death motivates me a lot. You said the word death, like that mm -hmm. motivates me a lot because there's two, we know how everyone's story ends. Mm -hmm. We die and that's mm -hmm. it. Like mm -hmm. we're born and we die. That's two, um, what's the thing like? periods in our time or like events in our life which are certain certain yeah <clears throat> and it's the bit in the middle which is life and the journey from here to there yeah so i know how my story ends i know how my big my story begun mm -hmm. i just gotta fucking write my book write my chapter in here write your book i i yeah. actually i look at things a lot very similarly the same way and i mean we were talking about our parents before and and like having like seen having seen that having lived through that and and my, I mean my parents weren't I'm guessing weren't as young as your mom but they're still in their sixties and you'd still think there's still a lot of life left to live but when you when you look at how finite everything really is I, it's the same way I don't want to I don't want to wait until I'm retired to start doing something or experiencing something if if there's a passion or something that you want to go after that motivates you you got to do that now you got to do it mm -hmm. you got to make that a priority in life like so you have people who are like oh, i'm gonna work hard i'm gonna earn money get a good pension and then afterwards i'm gonna enjoy life okay yeah. i feel yeah. like i see that quite a lot they wanting to make money do stuff so they can just chill out and be happy yeah but when they were working hard doing all this stuff they had this tool to live a happy life but they're just not choosing to look at them and look at their life and be like oh i've got a house i've got this i've got family i've got whatever i've got one and water i've got all these things that i can be appreciate show appreciate for and gratitude for and really learn to love them things and be happy in my life and not work towards having more things, having more things, because for me, having more money, having more things will, it leads to more responsibility as well. So yeah. Yeah. if you have a better car, like cars are pretty essential in this age, you get from point A to point B, but if you're wanting just the best car, mm -hmm. like that's a bigger bill you have to pay for. So you have to sure. work more for the yeah. same thing that gets you from point A to point B. Would yeah. you rather have a nice car or a less nice car should we say and be able to do the things you really enjoy that's how this, i look at things this this is the point where the things you own start to own you yeah man. Are, are you consuming just to keep up with everyone else or are you like what's your priority and yes for some people it is you know your day job is able to provide you with the means to enjoy the other things in life that you love. Like you, you might do something on the side, yeah. provide for your family, and those are your priorities in life, and that's good. If uh, there's something else that you, you're, you're avoiding or waiting or sitting on, and that's where it can be. That's where I think it, it can get hard because I do think I, there's a very real time stamp on things. And then mm -hmm. other, thing, other priorities come, other things happen in life, and it, it's slowly that that thing you wanted to do starts to go further and further back in the priority list to a point where it just becomes one of those things where I, I should have done that. I could have done that, but I didn't. So you're doing it. So you're giving it all right now. Yeah, I'm trying to. <laughs> yeah. You've moved away from your family. Your, your mm. girlfriend is still up in Scotland. Yeah, she's up in Scotland. I haven't seen her in like five months. Oh, that's crazy. And you surrender. Yeah, we were talking. I think we talked about this before too. And like in this modern age, it's it's gotten a lot easier to do something like that. And if you have good communication and everything, you can make it work. Yeah, um, for sure. But I feel like the number one thing in relationships or life is communication. Like even in school, learning communication is so key in learning how to express your emotions and even knowing your emotions first. Mm -hmm. How I feel when I wake up, how I feel when I do things just makes it so much easier to have a friendship or stuff with people. If 
you can communicate and speak effectively. I feel. I think I think that's the perfect point. And it sounds like you've done a lot of reflecting and and uh, communicating while in Leeds because you and Hamish here, you start you guys started a podcast together, and it seems yeah, like me- you guys have a really great dynamic and um i don't know what the coaching setup is is going on up there but it sounds like uh your coaches have developed a really nice community for you as british athletes gb athletes to to like get better in this like communal sense yeah i feel like the big thing which made a difference from joining precision is the team not like apart from mark mark's coaching like Mm -hmm. In my opinion best coach he's like amazing um but like the community of athletes we ha- he has and it's, it's really nice because at trainings and stuff we'll, we train together quite regularly well i train with someone every day before mm-hmm. lockdown and it's just like you're constantly seeing people um get better you're getting better you're bouncing off people there's more people at the session it's one thing i really miss from through lockdown is competition mm-hmm. so like being in a climbing wall and someone doing a block or a move before you and you're like what i'm gonna do this move bro and then you go and do the move <laughs> or the block and it's just this you're like i miss that man i miss being humbled and i miss like humbling people as well you know yeah but yeah. it's not it's nice when like you can't do a block and someone else does it like it's annoying that's a feeling. That's an emotion, and me and Hamish, we we speak so much, and we go into depth about all this stuff, and um, we always say how. So, we after death, there's no emotion. There's nothing. We have is uncertainty. So the emotions we're feeling now, it's a privilege to feel the good emotions, the bad emotions at all. We just have mm-hmm. to just live it. So you just and, you accept that emotion that comes in. Yeah. But you don't let it consume you. You know it's there, and then you get motivated by the watching a person just do a, a block that you couldn't do, <laughs> and, and you then you, can, cha- you channel that. You channel that now into yeah. you just look at it and you're like, so why can that person do the block and I can't? And then you speak to them, ask them, see what they do with the hips, the feet. Like there will be a way. You just have to see and learn. Mm-hmm. And coming here of like really my mindset is just constantly learning and being in that beginner state of i have so much to learn so much to improve on and you can just look at things in a more open mind i think places like that are a great breeding ground for for champions really i've been looking at a lot of runners recently uh the kenyan team has something like that where they all live and eat they go have their camps and every day they're together it's communal they're feeding off each other and educating each other and making each other stronger so that when they go on to the international scene they're they're at their best and they have such amazing talent and then also i look at even in climbing i look at the the japanese team they seem also pretty close and um they see they've got to be doing something right there's so many top level japanese climbers out there who are just constantly dominating the field? Yeah, man. I mean, they're always up there. Do you, do you notice? Yeah, yeah. Do you see? Do you look at the Japanese team and think they're doing a lot of things right? I don't think heaps of people know what they're doing. Okay. Like, from what I know or what I understand, which could be wrong, they climb a lot. Like they a just lot. do so much climbing on these competition style boulders, and they've got this community where in these gyms where it's strong climbers. They go and they're just constantly competing against each other and pushing and pushing and just what you said, they're driving and just thriving off each other's energy to get better and just keep on learning. Mm-hmm. But maybe they've got some wacky training which works, but nobody sees it, man. So, <laughs> Top secret. Yeah. I don't so, believe there's no secrets. This is hard work. Yeah, man. How's, how's your mental game changed over the years? Talking to a lot of people, once you get to a certain physical capability and you're learning these modern boulders, it seems like the next level at your at your stage is the mental game. Would you say would you think that's fair? 
Well, I've got so much to gain in skill, technique, and physical still. I'm only 19, I feel. Like, yeah. my skill level is, it will increase heaps, I feel. I'm like, if I'm getting like one to one coaching, just learning and looking at people, yeah, I've got so much to learn there. But mental game as well, for me, that's so important. Because mm. last year and this year, my mentality is quite different. So I was more What's, like, yeah, angry and got psyched more and wanting to just go out and like rip the boulder to pieces. And that's what I felt like I was doing. But now it's just like, I'm at this constant level where I don't have to come up to this point to perform at my best. So I'm just, I'm just me and being me all the time. And that's where my performance is best. I feel just being calm so I can make good decisions. I'm not right. just emotionally needing to hit this certain place. And if I, on that day, I don't have much energy. I can't get out there and I perform bad. Like that's, I want to be consistent. You were saying uh, you do a lot of meditation now. Do you think, is that one of the things that really helped guide you in this, in this direction? Yeah, for sure. It's changed my whole outlook on life. Changed you know your I mean? whole outlook on life. Yeah, man. In what for way? People who know, for people who know me and who I've grew up with, and my, I don't know, man. My, I feel like now, You'll probably call me a hippie, bro. Like, yeah, you're a hippie. You meditate, you do all this stuff. What are you doing? But maybe a hippie up here, but a child and a climber down there, you know, in my tracks, he's walking about. But I, th- I thought it was funny. But um, I don't know. Like, it has changed my perspective on life. It's just, I appreciate things more. I'm more grateful. I can deal with my emotions i can look at things and just like i said i feel like i'm the observer in my life and when i feel a certain way it's not going to take over me if i'm angry i'm not going to let that rage just define what i'm going to do next it's like okay why am i angry i had a foot slip for example why did my foot slip oh because i don't weigh enough it's not really that bad is it like (laughs) Mm-hmm. If you look at it, there's so much other things in life which has been hard than what than what you're experiencing, and you'll experience harder things as well. And there's so much people in this world who have a harder life than me. I'm fucking very privileged to be able to stay here, to train, to be doing all these things that make me happy. And I'm if I'm getting pissed off because say i missed my train to go training and i'm gonna be 10 minutes late it's not the end of the world like Mm -hmm. come on yeah so when you go home your mates call you a hippie i don't think they they don't yet but i feel like they will (laughs) would you say would it be fair to say that, that climbing i mean it seems like climbing has made a real impact on the direction of your life yeah it has both like for sure like mm, in school man i've had a lot of friends i enjoy speaking to people enjoy people's company i yeah school i I like school we just i just fucked about i had fun i just i went to a place where my friends were at and we just had fun messed about and yeah i made like bad decisions in my early years like in my early teens even i was I was, yeah wish i but you learn from everything isn't it mm-hmm. and i feel like yeah i could have been on a different path or been easily doing something which yeah which is bad in society or whatever but i'm here i'm doing what i'm doing and that's yeah so what what is when you wake up every day do you have a routine that you go through I, maybe you maybe it's top secret training you do. Is it top secret? What's a week for Max Milne, Max the Future look like? It's different. Depends what time of year it is. Depends what I'm doing. What my, I'm just I just do the training what my coach says to do, and I have my own little things which I like to do. So I get up, I go, 
I hydrate, and then I do my meditation, and then I'll eat food, and then do my training. I'll foam more or stretch and just get warm in front of my laptop at the moment. I've been enjoying that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'll go on the board or do whatever I'm supposed to do. And then I'll stretch and have lunch, or have lunch stretch. And then do, if I have another training session later at night, do that. With the pandemic and everything, the competition season getting pushed back and you're focused on training. Do you have any, do you have anything outside you're looking to do? The weather's mm-hmm. not great right now. It's actually, it's been really hot in, in the yeah, it's UK. Been hot, but it's, it's quite rainy at the moment. So I think that's good. It will cool the rock down. And once it gets dry, I'm probably going to go out. But mm-hmm. I've said this before. I'm not really too motivated about outdoor rock. Like I am, but I enjoy the training and this process for the competition goals. I mm-hmm. want to be the best. I'm driven at that. And yeah, I like going outdoor climbing, but the rock's always going to be there. I won't be able to compete at my best the whole time. And maybe it's like, what would I rather be good at? Outdoor climbing or competition climbing? Competition climbing for me. So that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah, I'll for sure get outdoors and do some hard blocks, hopefully, and keep the sponsors happy. <laughs> I think there's a lot of other like top-level competitive athletes that feel the same way, don't they? Because... You have you have guys like the Mellow Crew who aren't doing competitions; they're out there doing hard blocks mm. all the time. But you have a lot of really strong, elite international climbers as well, who are wrapped up in the competition season all year long. You don't see them going outside too much. You don't see often um, like a huge scent tick list of them doing stuff outside. Mm. There is some athletes who enjoy doing both, and they do both, and it works for them, but. For me, it's just like in my off season, well, off season, mm-hmm. my where we don't have comps, comp season finishes. I'm looking towards next year. I'm just gonna yeah. train as much as I can so I can improve as much, so yeah. the next year I can do better. So, do you set yourself goals right now to keep yourself motivated in this time, or is it just mm-hmm. you taking it week by week? I feel like I'm quite motivated at the moment. Like I am pretty motivated. I'm just enjoying what I'm doing. Like, I do have goals, but not, I used to set, like, last year I set myself goals for like, every session. Like, okay, write down my notebook, I'm going to do this block, I'm going to try this block, I'm going to do this block. But sometimes you don't need to do that. Sometimes it's mm-hmm. like, okay, I've got my session. Today's my goal to, I'm just going to go and complete this session and do it as much, like, as best as I can. Mm-hmm. And then I'm just trying to get better for when comes come on. I feel like I'm just this little pit bull. And Mark, Mark's just holding me by the leash and he's like, Mark, yeah, just, just stay here, stay here. And he will let me off to lead when I'm ready. So we'll see. Oh, that's amazing. You said before you're 5'5". Five five. Do you think that, do you, do you ever look at that, not as an, ex, not as an excuse, but does do people talk about height a lot? Mm, maybe. Cause I feel like if you want to talk about it, you can talk about it, but I'm just like, it's my height. <laughs> you can't do anything about it. That's, that's, that's a, yeah, for sure. But when I, when you look at, um, setting, right? Setting mm. is, is not neutral. And mm. the setters are going to set for what I hear is they, they usually set for the top level who they, who they know is coming to the, to the competition. They're going to yeah. set for, for the people they expect to be at the top. Not everybody's the same height. And often when you get to a finals, it's very small margins that separate people from winning and losing. Yeah. Do you, do you, what, what are your thoughts on, I guess, height and climbing in general? Do, does it, well, do you, ever, did you let it, does it mess with you at all? Or you even just don't care? You just don't focus. Like, obviously my height's going to work in my advantage a lot of the time. And then sometimes it won't, but that's just like part of the game. Just, in football as well, man. Yeah. If the ball's in the air and there's a short guy and a tall guy, most of the time the tall guy will probably get it. But on the ground, that if the ball's on the ground and the short guy might be faster, there's heaps of things I can look at. It's, it's not just one thing like, oh, 
Yeah, if I miss height, then I'm not going to be good. Like, look at Mike Tyson in heavyweights. He was tiny. He was still world yeah. champ. Yeah. Kai Harada is like one inch taller than me or whatever. He's really similar. So is Tamoa. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're, fucking, they're at, up at the top. Like, you yeah. can see taller climbers doing well. You can see shorter climbers doing well. Yeah. It's just a big roundabout, in it? Like, yeah. it'll go yeah. my favor sometimes, and sometimes it won't. And I feel if I blame my height, I can miss the actual reason why it didn't go my way. Okay, I can do this move because the way Hamish did it, mm-hmm. he did it off that foot. And I how tall is how tall is Hamish? He looks pretty tall. Six feet maybe. I don't know. He's, yeah. he's pretty tall. So I'm like, okay, I can do the move off that foot the way Hamish did it. But then again, I could have got my foot here or did it dynamically and he might not be able to do it my way. And yeah, it's different. I think that's probably the best outlook you can have. Yeah. It's one of those things that it doesn't matter what grade you're at. If you're at the gym, you know height's going to come up in a conversation somewhere. So it's nice mm-hmm. that you see, you see the positive. Well, and when I was a kid, man, I was way smaller. Like in, my, in my younger years, I feel like it affected me more than it does now. Mm-hmm. And it just made me have this style which I have now. So I'm more explosive, I'm more yeah. dynamic, I'm, and that being younger and having to jump to holds, that made me the climber in this style I have now. So it kind of lines up really well with the style of climbing these days as well. It's yeah, it does. It's, cool. it's really coordination based. Yeah, I'm excited. For it. I want. I want to compete. Competing's fun. I love it. You must you must really feed off the the crowd and everything. I like that. I feel I like the pressure as well. I like looking at the crowd coming out, just seeing people cheering and you're just mm. you just get into the flow state as well. Like when I'm climbing, I don't notice it. I'm just focused on what I need to do. And then but then get into the top and turn around to the crowd and it's like <laughs> what <laughs> You'd say you're a competitive person by nature? Yeah, I think so. I feel like I'm... I, well, I am competitive. I go to mm-hmm. these competitions wanting to win. Mm-hmm. But I feel... I have accepted winning. You can't win all the time. You can't just... Well, maybe you can, but I haven't. I'm mm-hmm. still doing okay, and I still have goals and stuff. So, and the first comp where I haven't won, and I felt good about it, was Plywood Masters this year. Plywood Masters. Mm, I came second to Jim Pope. Mm-hmm. And like, usually I, I feel angry. Like I feel like I lost. Obviously I lost, but it's like, I didn't fail. I didn't fail. I didn't win, but I didn't fail, I feel. And I feel like that was nice. That was a nice stepping stone that I can still be happy and just without winning. Because, yeah. I just wanted to add that, but I don't know. Well, the one thing too, like you've come up, this is your first year at like the, essentially the senior senior division and you were up there with everyone, uh, even as a junior, like last year, you're still up there with all of these guys who are at yeah. the top level in the country. Yeah, maybe, but... <laughs> I, yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, yeah, I could... Yeah, but I'm just focused on. I want to go. I say I want to be world champion stuff, so I'm just looking towards all this and going to my first World Cup, and then competing in my first World Cup, making my first World Cup semi, making my first World Cup final. Because like I'm not, I'm not deluded. Mm -hmm. I'm not like, oh, I'm going to go to my first World Championships. I'm going to dominate. I'm going to beat everyone. Nah, like. It's it's not an easy process. It's gonna probably most likely be a long process and it might never happen. But in my mind, yeah, I'm pretty I'm not confident but I'm driven enough that I'll do everything to try and make it happen. So and for it's, you it it's a lot about those international comps. How did it feel at at uh, the climbing works quiff this year? It was sick, it was good. You had a bunch of strong guys 
future mm-hmm. Olympians. Yeah, man. How did, how did that feel? It was cool. I didn't feel like I didn't compete amazingly. I didn't. Yeah, I scraped into semis, <laughs> and in semis, I didn't. I did three blocks out of four. Didn't get the zone on the fourth block. It was it was okay, but I don't look at that comp and I'm like, oh sick, I'd climb well. No, I I climbed alright. I climbed good, but there's a lot of things which I need to fix and or I could have done better. And I did I did I did the best I could. I feel, but I don't want to be eleventh or quiff or whatever it was. That's not. Mm. Like, do you learn anything from watching guys like Nathaniel? Do you pick up anything when you're at a competition with like that? Like, or obviously, like the mental game as well. Where I see at that comp, I mostly took, I mostly seen Nathan. Like, I feel like he just went and climbed. Like, he was, he was just focusing on the blocks and doing that, and that's a big thing which I looked at. I was like, that's cool, that's cool. Obviously, Ogata winning. That's, it's sick. Ogata's, Ogata is um, so good. He's, he's so nice good. Climber. Love yeah. watching that guy climb, yeah. Obviously, I can always learn from them and how they climb and what he's doing, the decision-making, but I'm trying to learn from everyone. So when do you hope to, when do you hope to be back competing again? Is there any indication? Nah, not for me anyway. Like, I feel Moscow, you know, the selection for the olympics for the europeans that will be the first international competition which is on um but i'm not selected for that but i'll be cool watching that seeing what happens Mm -hmm. but i i don't know what's happening for me i'm just waiting to see what the government says when borders open when i can maybe travel and just start competing at internationally if I can't compete nationally. So what are your predictions then uh, for Max in the future? Do you have a one-year goal? Do you have a five-year goal? Do you have something like that? Do you think about that at all? Well, at the moment, it's a bit strange because when's comp going to start? I've got little goals to get to the big goal. Mm-hmm. And then that's this progress of getting to my World Cup, getting to European um cups and european championships at seniors and then making semi-finals trying to make the consistent name making finals doing all these things who knows i could go out and do really well or i could go out and be humbled and be like okay i need to work on this and this to get there so i'll see but they're the goals then i've got things in training which i probably want to hit and feel confident in so when I go to these competitions I'm confident in my ability because last year that was like biggest thing for me is having the confidence because like if you just go out and like last year at world juniors at European championships as well I just felt like I was the guy yeah yeah you know what I mean I was like yeah I trained so hard that I'm gonna go out in these boulders Except for the best, or except for the best people to do them, and I believe I was that person. So obviously, I went out and did what? Maybe I wasn't the best person. Obviously, I wasn't. I didn't win, but I thought that, and it allowed me to perform at my best. Or mm. it did last year. So you need to get that feeling projected forward in an, in a, in a new uh, new arena with new players. Yeah, man. <laughs> New players. That's nice. What's happened today then? Back to training? You train in the morning? More training tonight? Yeah. I've got rested tomorrow. So I'm going to record a podcast with Hamish. Amazing. Oh, yeah. Let's shout out that podcast. What's It's the Projection Podcast, yeah? So on Instagram, it's uh, the Projection Podcast and the underscore Projection underscore Podcast. And on YouTube, it's Projection Podcast. Um, yeah, you can find it on youtube anchor spotify and you and hamish hamish is another gb athlete gb climber you guys sit yeah. down and you guys talk about life training yeah. he's he's coached by my coach points. as well he's coached, coached by, by the same mind. coach if you guys yeah. weren't in lockdown I'm, you guys would be training together all the time he lives in york but 
yeah, he comes across and we train together often. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he might be moving to Lee. Like, in the future, me and him is wanting to move in with each other. And you guys, you both like the same age, right? You're both coming up at the same time. He's in the you? category below me. So okay. he's 18, I'm 19, going to be 20 in December. So he's not he's not in the seniors yet. He's still got one more year in. He uh, competes in seniors. He does compete in seniors. Okay. Yeah, he goes to World Cups. So you guys are coming up together then. That's good. <laughs> You'll live together, yeah. train together, feed yeah. off each other. Yeah, and on paper, me and Hamish are like so different, but we just work so well to each other. And we've got like, if you look at us, you think they're just different people. Like we had different upbringings and all this stuff, but. Mentally, we have a similar view in life and stuff, and he's a good person to be around and a motivated guy. And you'll teach everybody your secrets on your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> My <laughs> secrets, <man. laughs> but yeah, we we speak about a lot of stuff like our views, uh, how we train, and our process of coming up and where we want to go. Yeah, perfect. Go check that out. I'll link to your Max the Future on Instagram as well. <laughs> Max, Max's Instagram, how do I describe it? It For me, it's just like, it's climbing goals. That's what it is, watching your Instagram because it's you training right. and you eating well. Or I think you post stuff on like boxing and uh, like, like MMA. other MMA. Yeah, the um, competitors that are also training like nonstop to be yeah. I, number one. I take a lot of inspiration and motivation and I just see the work they put in and see similar things from them because you can learn from their mindset and how they just lead their life. And I feel like Sugar Sean O'Malley, he has a podcast mm-hmm. and he's an up and coming UFC fighter. And I look up to him quite a lot and I look at his stuff and I've learned a lot from him. But Mark has said, like, I take like two weeks off listening to podcasts and do not looking at factual things because you don't want me to become an imitation of Shiki Sean or instead of constantly trying to be better I need to just like be myself you need to yeah. give yourself time to breathe and just be you instead of trying to constantly change yourself I think those are wise words going back to what we said at the yeah, beginning man. of like a role model because nobody's yeah. going to be that perfect image of what you what people want you to be. So you got to yeah. be yourself. Nobody's perfect. Like you can look up to people, you can look at inspirations and you can also see what they did wrong and be like, okay, why did they do this? Maybe there wasn't a reason for what they did. Yeah. But you can learn from everything. And yeah, I feel if people make mistakes, you shouldn't just be like, he lost, I'm not going to look up to him. I don't care, he's a loser. <laughs> but. And there's more there's more more than one way to be a champ. You don't have to be the same champ as someone else. Dude, mm-hmm. thanks for coming on. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me on. It's sick. <laughs> it's, it's good. Like, it's good to yeah, chat. Yeah.